Welcome back everyone. So before starting the actual content of this video, I'd like to talk about a few changes that I have made off screen. So in our code, I have commented out my previous initial data and I have taken a new set of initial data. The, the only difference is that previously, on the previous array, I was using time stream for my time property, but in the new array, I am using timestamp for the time property. And on the previous data, we had one candle for each day. See, um, on the 19th of October, we have one candle. On the 22, we have another candle. But in the new data, we have on the same day, we have multiple candle. So um, this is this candle is for let's take a look. It's on December 30. Let's take a look at the next one. This one is also on December 30. So on the same day, we have multiple candle now but on different times definitely i will talk about the reason why i have made this change later in this video for now let's just continue so in order to customize the time scale let's just uh, visit their documentation and uh, let's search time scale options so as you can see on the time scale options we have many properties so we have right offset, bar spacing, minimum, minimum bar spacing, fixed left edge. We have border visible, border color. So I think we already specified the border color. So inside of chart.timescale.apply options, we already have border color. All right. So most of these customization options all of most of these properties are actually very useful so we'll take a look at some of them okay so in our code i'm just going to move this to in the top since there are customization options i'd like to keep all of the customization options in the same place so right under chart.apply options i'm going to paste them so our first property is right offset right offset let's say 20 so if i go to my chart now okay so let's comment this out and see our chart our series starts from the very right right edge when we first load our chart so if i give it a right offset of say 20 we shall see that it starts it has a 20 index cap from the right up right edge so this is what this right offset is doing so what is this 20 so it's the unit of measurement in lightweight charts see each of these candles are one index if you consider each of these candles one index then we have 20 index gap from the right side all right next we have bar spacing so bar spacing it has a default value of six so let's give it something bigger say bar spacing is 15. so we can see no changes at all so why is that it's because uh, we've already specified a method called fit content so we're saying that okay um make the chart 100 percent stretch it from left to right so that's why it's not this change is not taking effect so if i comment this out then i can see the new changes so we have a bar spacing of 15 now all right now let's move on to the next option next property which is called minimum bar spacing so if i go to my chart now currently i can zoom out really far see that's because by default lightweight charts has a minimum bar spacing of only 0.5 okay so if i give it a bigger value say minimum bar spacing of say 5 now we won't really be able to zoom out 
that far anymore see this is the this is the maximum amount i can zoom out now i cannot really go that far anymore see this is the this is the maximum amount all right then we have fixed fixed left edge so if i go to my chart now i can go on the right on the left i can go as far as i want to okay but if i give it a fix left edge it's it's a boolean so i have to give it true by default it has a value of false now if i see if i zoom out then drag left i cannot really drag any further so this is what fix left edge does the next option is fix uh, right edge so that's it's going to do the same thing but for the right side so i don't really think i need to show that to you as well log visible time range on race size we're not going to see that so border visible we already set a border color to our border and uh, border visible by default is true so the border is this purple line okay it's a very dim color so we can barely see it but if i make it red let's say red then we'll be able to see it see this is the border so i'm going to revert that we can also make the border visible or invisible so border is not visible and we're going to say that we're going to put the value false and as you can see we've lost our border i don't really like that so i'm going to comment this out all right border color we've already seen that okay so we can hide our entire time scale altogether okay so if we don't if our use case um, requires us to hide the time scale we can do that as well so all we have to say that visible is equals to false see we don't have any time scale anymore i don't really need that so i'm just going to comment it out so time visible see in our current chart if we zoom zoom in really uh, deep yeah, you'll see that we have see 31 31 31 31 31 31 same for 29 29 okay so why is that that's because on 31st of march we have multiple candles on different times of the day but we haven't really turned on the time visible okay so you see it has a default value of false so we have to make the time visible if i make it true then we shall see now we have time visible see on 31st of march on 4:45 we have a candle on 5:45 we have another 6:45 7:45 and 8:45 we have candles on these times so this is the reason why i had changed my initial data array to show you the time on the time scale and by time i mean the hour and minute value okay let's look at the next property the next option is tick mark formatter so before using this i'm going to talk about why this is useful so back in my data on the initial data if i go to the timestamp to just normal human readable date converter we can see that our first candle is on december 30 on 345 so this is the gmt value on my time zone which is bangladesh we have 9:45 okay on the next candle let's take a look at the next candle so the gmt value is 4:45 and on my time zone it's 10:45 so even on the time scale if i take a look
See, even here we have, if we zoom in further, so this is actually using the GMT value. See, it's 445. And even on the time scale, this is showing 445. So this is the very left. I mean, this is the first data in our, this is the second data in our data array. And uh, like we have seen on the timestamp to normal date converter, on my time zone, this is 1045, but this is actually showing the GMT time. So how can I convert it to my locale? All right, for this, we're going to use this tick mark formatter. So this is actually a function. So on my, I'm going to minimize this because this is a huge data. And uh, under the chart dot time scale, I'm just going to say tick mark formatter. Okay. And this property is actually a function. So I'm going to, to write a arrow function. And inside of this, this actually takes three parameters. So if I search for tick mark, tick mark formatter, okay, nothing came up, but don't worry. So if I tick here, we can see that it takes three parameters. The first one is the time, then we have tick mark type, and then we have the locale. All right, so let's specify them time, then we have tick mark type, and then we have the locale. Now I'm just going to copy and paste a boilerplate code. So after that, I'm just going to explain what I have done. After pasting the boilerplate code, I'm going to do all the necessary imports. So we have something called tick mark type, and I'm going to explain in a few minutes what this is. So for now, let's just import it from the lightweight charts library. Also, there is another thing. This won't be timestamp. This is supposed to be a time. Okay. So if we take a look at our code, timestamp is on. Okay. Refreshing fix it. So if we go to the very first data, to the very first candle and zoom in, we will see that instead of 4.45, now we have 10.45. So this time is actually this time it is actually using the time that's related to my locale. So if I go to the second candle and uh, copy the timestamp and paste it to get the human readable date, we will see that on my time zone, the time is actually 1045, but on GMT, it was 445. So yes, our code is actually working. Let's explain what's going on. So inside the tick mark formatter, we have three parameters, time, tick mark type, and locale. And uh, this time, we're actually using the timestamp value. So the time that is passed in the a new instance of the date object is actually a timestamp. So if I get the from console and show you so const date is equals to new date and pass it a timestamp. Let's see the second one. Okay. So okay, so it's giving 1970. It's just giving me garbage value because the new date object takes timestamp in the in milliseconds but we're providing it in seconds that's why in our code we're also converting it to milliseconds by multiplying it with 1000 so here let's say we have to multiply it with 1000 and then we will get our desired date so we passed a timestamp to our date object the default javascript date object and it gave me it converted the timestamp to a time stream that is on my locale see it's on bangladesh standard time it's 10 45. so 
this is what this function basically this what this function is basically doing it's converting the timestamp to my lo local time 